Hey everyone, good evening, Synthetic Future here, and today we're going to take another look at Unfiltered Audio Silo. And this time we're going to use the Roland JDXA. Why the Roland JDXA? Well, hardware synthesizers just perform better in YouTube thumbnails. So what better than one of these nice, shiny, uh, very controversial Roland synthesizers to get some nice little YouTube views going. All right, all right. Now that we're all on the same page, uh, let's dive into Silo. This is one of my many, many videos in uh, the Silo series. Um, if you haven't watched my other videos, I am part of the Silo beta testing team uh, or the Unfilled Audio beta testing team, I should say. So I have been playing around with this synthesizer for quite a while. I also didn't pay for it. However, I try to be very objective when talking about this stuff. And this is more of a tutorial anyways. I'm not trying to sell you this plugin. Uh, I'm just hoping to inspire you, to show you some possibilities. And uh, hopefully it will help you make a decision on whether this plugin is something you would like or not, which is completely possible. So this little intro I just did uh, was using the JDXA. Uh, let's just quickly bypass Silo. And it sounds like this. And this is just one out of the box uh, presets for the Roland JDXA. And once we kick in the silo, we get. So that's what this tutorial is all about. This is about uh, transcading and rhythmizing your pads something that silo does really well so let's get initialized and let's get cooking all right so we have silo initialized uh, make sure it is still enabled that's important and That's what Silo will do right now. So we need to think about a few things. Uh, first off, we need to think about rhythm and tempo. And after that, we need to think a little bit about what we're trying to achieve sound-wise. So let's start off with fairly simple ducking. Uh, we want to be in tempo mode to make sure everything is nicely synced up with the beat. Let's go with quarter notes. Set the rate to quarter notes, if I can find it, that's eight. So this is quarters, there we go. We don't want to touch the pitch or speed. And we don't want to touch any of the other parameters. And what happens now is that Silo will spit out a quarter uh, note grain every quarter note. So essentially the volume will go up and down every quarter note. Just to make things smooth, we move it to the hen. As you can see, the hamming has a small little bump here. We don't want that. We want the hen profile, so it's nice and flat. And if we play a note now. You want to turn off the spatializer and the reverb. And there we go. Transcading in silo. End of tutorial. No, not really. <laughs> There's a little bit more to it. There are some things you can do to tweak this. First off, you can move this profile back if you want to do the classic duck. And let's actually line this up with the beat so we can see what is going on here. So let's record our outputs on both our drum pattern and our silo thing. Here we go. And as you can see, every time the beat hits, our silo patch is low. And when the beat is gone, it will go up. Now you can actually visually check if your settings are somewhat correct. And I think this is actually pretty close because this is the end of the kick. And this is where the synth starts. So this is pretty clean. 
And you can tweak it a little bit with the window to get it dead on to where you want it to be. But this is a pretty good start. Now from here on, you can tweak how much the duck is. So right now it's ducking all the way to no volume. If you want to keep a little bit of volume, simply slide down the mix. And the ducking will become less extreme. And if you up the mix, this is just a matter of experimentation for what works with your specific uh, music. Now, right now it's ducking every quarter note, which is pretty much the basic ducking pattern. Uh, but you can also switch it up a little bit. You can, for instance, say, I don't want to duck it every note. I want to duck it every uh, half a beat. Or you can, of course, just speed up by upping the tempo. Going to eight, for instance. And that's pretty much your basic ducking. Now, from this point on, we can start to experiment a little bit. So, for instance, if we start to mess around with the rate versus how long each grain is. So, let's go to generating every quarter and let's keep it at an eight. It becomes more staccato. And if we speed this up even more. We need to put the mix at 100% to really hear it. So from here on, you can start to play around with the rates. So let's, for instance, go to eight. Or even faster, 16s. Get really fast little glitches. Now from here on you can really start to experiment with stuff. So for instance you can lower the rate. So only generate a grain every one fourth. Now let's keep the grains pretty short. And you get these really staccato little stabs. Um, more interesting even is to keep the rate high. So let's go for 16s and 16 notes. I, there we go. And now we can start to utilize the mask to start to create patterns. So for instance, we can do this. You can of course slow this down. Let's go to eight. In this case, it's slightly less important to have it uh, duck uh, off beat. So you can actually even move it forward a bit. With this shape, it actually accentuates the attack a little bit because if you're back here, you will get a slope into it. Well, at the front, you will get a pretty fast bump and then a slow fade. And this is how you can start to make all sorts of interesting, weird little patterns. And it's worth noting that you can actually automate this parameter. And uh, this of course depends on your DAW of choice. Uh, I'm using Reaper here, so you can just go here and you can go to the mask. Arm it for uh, modulation. And then you can start to mess around with it. So we can move it up a little bit here. And you want to set this to uh, Square. 
Uh, let's just draw in something a little bit random. So I can't predict how this is going to sound. But it's going to be fun either way. Uh, I should have set the default shape to square, but oh well. A tricky thing here is there's actually a tripod lag in my field of view, so I actually can't see this part of the track. So I think I think we got it. So let's try this. Should have set it to repeat. And the fun thing of this is, especially if you're going to blindly automate this, you are going to run into patterns you might not have thought of yourself. So that's a pretty neat feature. Um, and from here on out, you can just start to make things wacky uh, as much as you want to. So let's just make this automation slightly different. Let's push this up a little bit. I personally like the lower masks more because they have a little less grains. Uh, so we make this shape. I don't know what it's going to sound like, but we're going to keep it. We're going to throw in some reverse grains. Let's just go for 25%. A little bit of stereo spread. Uh, we're going to keep this all the same. And just for funsies, let's introduce a little bit of freeze. Let's see where we are. So that's already pretty cool sounding. And from here on, once again, uh, you are using silos and you can completely make this weird if you're just going to add like a bunch of uh, spatialization to it. So we're just going to keep it in 3D for now. So now you can actually hear it bounce around, which is pretty awesome. And let's kick in our uh, reverb is the word I'm looking for. And uh, once again, we're just going pretty randomly here. Now I want to have the distance up because I know if I have the distance low, you will get this really weird uh, metallic sound, which is something you could be after, but I'm more after a more natural re reverb. Going to leave it to chance, balance it out, uh, no filters for now. Actually, let's do a high pass filter around 80. Let's see where we are. So I don't think that reverbs works completely. So let's just go back to variation instead. So everything has a reverb, but the level is variable, which can be good. Let's make it a little bit bigger, a little bit longer. Tiny bit of resonance, compressor up a little bit. I think this is all right. If 
are especially ballsy and your DAW supports it, you can throw a sample and hold on the mask. That's extra chaotic. But this gives you a little bit of an idea how you can do some gating and some rhythm tricks with Silo. Um, and you can push this as far as you want to. The little preset I showed uh, in the intro, the rhythmic pulsar, uses only reverb with the Blackman, so you get these upsloping uh, little things. Quite a few grains, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and this is a different variation. This is so made for people who are too lazy to actually press keys. It's perfect. It's so much easier. And now you can just simply enable it. So ideal for lazy people. And you can totally experiment with this. You can have them forwards, you can have them backwards, you can have like tiny little explosive little blips. Uh, or you can go. I especially like reverse, by the way, in this. But that works as well. Uh, let's do this one, put it like this, and reverse this. I mean, it's totally, totally up to you. So there you go. This is Unfiltered Audio Silo for gating, um, trends gating, Euro trends, EDM, Bossa Nova, I don't know, man. All those genres you want to use this stuff. It's pretty amazing. Uh, Experiment with automating the mask, experiment with automating the rate and the size for even more predictable chaotic effects. That's it for now. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section because that's what it's made for. Uh, don't forget to leave a like if you like this video. You can follow me along on this journey. We will be covering both the GDXA a little bit more in future videos as well as Silo. So thanks for watching and uh, have a great night.